Last time, I got the engine pulled out and put on the stand. This time, I'll be tearing down the engine to see what it needs. First, the exhaust has to come off. Some penetrating oil helps free up these rusty bolts. I tried getting the O2 sensors out, but they were stuck. I labeled them since the upper and lower plugs appear to have the same connectors and decided to leave them on the manifolds. Nice. The exhaust studs and nuts came out together since the nuts were a bit frozen on the stud. The engine note had to come off to get the manifold off. No big deal. Oops. With all the stuff off this side of the engine, it's time to move on to the rat's nest on the other side. The oil level sensor was tricky to disconnect and it was the last thing to take off before the wires would come off. This is going to be a later problem. Next was the engine mount, then the coolant pipes, oil filter housing, and knock sensors. I already cleaned up the oil filter housing last year, so this whole area should already be clean. No oil. Interesting. All right. Next, I struggled with the crank pulley, but I wasn't able to get it off. I took some time to degrease the motor instead. I moved on to the valve cover next, which gave me a good look at the cams. Oh. Woof. That's what you don't want to do. Oops, the daisy. It's honestly not that bad. I got a little bit of sediment in here when I took the cover off, which is a typical mistake. The Vanos was next in order to take the cams out. I bagged oh up and labeled God. all these parts along the way to keep track of everything. Surprising. Yeah. That's a lot of oil. I'm just gonna let it happen. Yeah, whatever.
The thermostat and water pump had to come off at some point, so I took care of them. That looks like rust to me. This is only like nine months old. And it's dumping all of this rust into my cooling system. I gotta buy one of these with a plastic impeller on it instead. I can't have that. The Vano solenoids lift off as one unit, leaving the gears in the front of the cams. I still haven't figured out how the system works with all these pieces, but I'll figure it out when I reassemble everything. Bagging and labeling on the parts will for sure be useful. Note there are two timing chains. This is what allows for the variable cam timing. I put a pin in the first tensioner and the second comes out with a big socket. To get the cam gears off, you can put a wrench in the cam to prevent it from spinning. The cams can now be removed. There is a procedure to make sure the cams aren't bent too much since they are hollow and brittle. The cam has to be oriented so as few of the lobes as possible are engaged in the springs. Then, the final two caps are loosened up progressively until the cam is out. The last cap, which should have been loose, stuck a little bit and had to be wiggled out. You can clearly see that scoring, and I can feel it slightly with my fingers too. This engine has removable ledges that house the cams and hydraulic lifters. Yeah, this can be removed next, but it is inevitable that the lifters will all fall out. I was careful to keep track of which ones went where. Spinning the motor to its side most likely would have prevented the lifters from falling out, which would have made this all easier. I loosened up the head bolt, starting at the middle and working my way outwards. I've heard conflicting advice on removing the head bolt. Some say to go the opposite way. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. There are two more bolts on the back side of the head that hold a bracket in. Can't forget these.
After draining all the coolant, I moved on to the oil pan to get at the bottom end. I was instantly greeted by an issue that would have blown my motor. The oil pump nut was loose and the sprocket was wiggling all over the place. Safety wire in this nut is a must. The baffle and oil pump pulled out, exposing the rest of the bottom end. After popping the rod caps off, the pistons and rods pulled out. Hmm. It's quite a bit of wear, I think. This is cylinder two. This side of the piston skirt is completely worn off on that area. It looks like it's burning a lot of oil because we've got carbon buildup past the rings, which is, I don't know if that's normal. I finally was able to get the crank pulley off, which allowed me to get the timing cover off as well. The timing chain guides become very brittle after time and are definitely a must for a replacement. Alright, not too bad. There it is. Snap, snap. With the crank pulley off, I could unbolt all the main bearings and remove the crank. These bearing caps are tricky to get out, especially the thrust bearing. You'll have to wait until next video to hear what I'm saying about the bearing conditions. Oh boy. The oil squirters are the last things left in the motor that I can remove. After this, the engine teardown is complete.
Well, that's it for disassembly. This motor is completely taken apart. In the next video, I'll be doing an in-depth inspection to make sure everything's in spec and then decide what I'm going to do with rebuilding. I've got all my parts lined up on the shelf over here and the crank is over on the table. And then I've got a whole shelf over there of more engine parts from the outside mostly. So, as always, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.